So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and as everybody saw, Apple released their new M1 iPad Pros. And it got me thinking after a while that the 12.9 iPad Pro has a value sell, right? They got the mini LED display, the larger size, but then they also release a new M1 iPad Pro in the 11 inch variant that doesn't have that mini LED display. So what I wanna talk about is exactly who that 11 inch iPad Pro is for, because there's a big argument that can be made that you can get a refurbished iPad Pro 11 inch, which I have over there, or maybe even an iPad 4 instead of going with that M1 iPad Pro in the 11 inch variant. So without further ado, let's talk about who this iPad Pro is for. So the first thing that I do want to talk about is the actual feature set and the spec sheet of the new 11 inch iPad Pro. So we're not talking about the 12.9 inch. So with the new 11 inch iPad Pro, you obviously get the, the new M1 chip, you get the new 12 megapixel selfie camera with center stage, which is awesome to see. You get the ability to get 5G, which yes, you can get on the 12.9 inch, but again, we're talking about just the 11 inch right now. So you have the ability to get 5G and you get that new Thunderbolt port instead of USB-C. So the one thing that they didn't put that you're pretty much getting from the 12.9 is that mini LED display that Apple's calling their Liquid Retina XDR. You still get a Liquid Retina you know, display on the iPad Pro, you still get ProMotion, you still get the color gamut, the P3, the contrast ratio. So everything from a color standpoint is still there. It's just a different screen technology that's been put on the iPad Pro that's supposed to get to that XDR level, right? So that is really the only thing that is differentiating the iPad Pro 12.9 aside from the physical size of the product and then probably the size of the battery in the product. But at the end of the day, you're getting the same amount of battery life on both devices just because, again, the bigger screen takes up more power and then the smaller screen, less power, so the ratio is pretty much the same. So again, the only difference between the new iPad Pros is the size and that new mini LED display technology. So keep that in mind when thinking about the 11 inch iPad Pro that's being released in 2021. And then in terms of actual internal specs, right, you still get the M1 chip like I mentioned. And then with the 11 inch iPad Pro, you can go up to two terabytes of storage, which gives you up to 16 gigs of RAM, which is awesome. And we don't have any other iPad Pro or any other tablet in the Apple ecosystem that can get you that form factor and then also that amount of RAM and that amount of internal storage. So if that's something that's really dire to you to have it in an 11 inch form factor, then yes, this is gonna be the iPad for you. But again, that is the overall spec sheet. So you go up to two terabytes of SSD storage and then also up to 16 gigs of RAM in that 11 inch form factor, which is pretty unbelievable to see. So that is awesome from Apple. So now that we covered the spec sheet, I would do wanna go over pricing, right? So the pricing of the new M1 11 inch iPad Pro starts at 799, right? So the actual price point for the base model of the iPad Pro hasn't really changed much. It hasn't changed at all, right? The previous iPad Pro was $799 and then the one before that was also $799. So you don't have to worry about the base price increasing like it did on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. That one got a $100 increase and it's probably most likely due to that mini LED display. And then in terms of storage variants, you go with 128, 256, 512, one terabyte and two terabytes. So you get all those options on both the iPad Pros. So overall right now, again, we're still talking about the only difference is that it doesn't have that mini LED display. So what I want to know is who this iPad Pro is for. And I want this to be conversational, so definitely leave comments as the video is going because I'm very curious to know who this iPad Pro is for. Because again, if you go to the Apple website, and we're going to do this together and kind of compare these models, right? You have the iPad Air 4 that sits at $200 cheaper for the base model. And then you also have the ability for refurbished 2018 Pro, which is exactly what this one is over here. It's an 11 inch. 2018 iPad Pro that I got refurbished over a year ago at a $500 price point. So keep that in mind when thinking about your purchasing decisions when it comes to this iPad Pro. So again, let's compare it first to the iPad Air 4, right? So from a base model perspective, you get $800 for the M1 iPad Pro, which gives you 128 gigabytes of storage, eight gigs of RAM because it is a new model. And then you go to the iPad Air 4, which doesn't bring the M1 chip and it has 64 gigs of base storage, it has, a, I believe, six gigs of RAM. Correct me if I'm wrong, it could still be four because they might have used the old form factor in the old chipset, but there is an A14 chip in there, which is very similar from an architecture standpoint to the M1 chip, because think about it for a second, right? The reason we saw such an amazing jump from the Intel base to the M1 base is because Apple changed complete chipsets, right? They kind of broke Moore's law by doubling their speed every two years because it's not the same technology. Meanwhile, we've been used to this awesome performance on the iPad and iPhone side because they've been using the M1 chips essentially, but just calling them A14s and A13s and things like that. So at the end of the day, yes, it's gonna be a bump from the A14 to the M1, but it's gonna be a normal amount of 
you know, increase in power. It's not gonna be something drastic. It won't be like going from an Intel-based laptop to the M1-based laptop. So A14 chip to M1 chip is probably gonna be a very similar instead of, you know, the Intel chip versus the M1 chip. So that's kind of how I want you guys to think about these new chipsets on the iPad Pros. So again, to compare it back to the iPad Air 4, the base model, you get $800 on one side, $600 on the other side. And then the big argument is like, oh, I can't use 64 gigs of storage, so if I'm gonna spend another $150 to get the 256 gigabyte version of the iPad Air 4, let me just go with the iPad Pro instead, right? Because it's only a $50 difference. But I mean, that's not a good comparison. You gotta compare it to the 256 gigabyte model, which again, gives you another $100, so that's a 900. So what I like to do is compare the $900 iPad Pro to the $750 iPad Air, because that's the same storage value. So if we continue down this list, you can see that the similarities are, are there, right? There's a lot of similarities to these two iPad models. So aside from the spec sheet, from a physical standpoint, you get seven megapixel camera on the iPad Air versus the new 12 megapixel camera. So if you need 12 megapixels in center stage, then yes, iPad Pro is for you. But the seven megapixel selfie camera, which I've been using on my iPad Pro for since I've had it, has been totally fine, it's been great. Then the iPad Air 4 does have a USB-C connector, but the new iPad Pro has a Thunderbolt connector, so if you need faster data speeds and transfer speeds and better external display support, then yeah, Thunderbolt is the way to go, but it's not like USB-C is a slouch, right? We've been using USB-C dongles and things of that nature for over two, three years, right? And they work very well. So again, USB-C and Thunderbolt, yes, Thunderbolt is better because it's bigger, better, faster, stronger, right, as it should be, but at the same time, USB-C is still perfectly fine for data transfers. You know, you can get up to 540 megabytes per second versus, yeah, with Thunderbolt, you get probably in the gigabytes per second, but still, it's not it's not too bad and it's not, to me, I don't know, it depends on the person that you are and how valuable your time is and how much faster you need that transfer speed. So again, up to you. And then again, you do have that differentiating factor that the iPad Air can only go with 4G data and then the new iPad Pro can go with 5G data, but the 5G data is $200 versus the 4G data is only 150 or maybe even 120 on the iPad Air 4. So again, the prices are a little bit different and the iPad Air 4 is always gonna be the cheaper option, right? But they both work with the Magic Keyboard, they both work with the Slim Folio Keyboard, they both work with the Apple Pencil 2, and they work the same, right? And then the only other physical difference is that on the rear, you get the double camera array with the LiDAR scanner on the iPad Pro, and then you get just a single rear wide angle camera, 12 megapixel camera on the rear of the iPad Air. Which again, I only use a back camera for scanning documents. I've never taken a useful photo with an iPad Pro or any tablet for that matter. So if you are somebody that needs that LiDAR scanner for you know maybe testing or that's what you do for your work, then sure, that's a very valuable thing to have for you. But for a lot of people, LiDAR is still just a, something that you pick up and use once and then you never really use it again. I mean, ask all the new iPhone 12 users how often they use their LiDAR scanner. And that's on the phone which is with you 24 seven. And there are people probably still aren't really using it that much. And now let's talk about the display tech on both of these, right? You have the iPad Pro and the iPad Air 4. So iPad Pro 11 inches, iPad Air 4 10.9 inches, right? So the bezels are a little bit thicker, but again, if you've never used either of them, and unless you have them side by side, you're not gonna see the difference. But you get the same exact pencil density, which is 264 PPI. On the iPad Pro, you have 600 nits of brightness versus 500 nits of brightness on the iPad Air 4. So it's a little bit brighter on the Pro model, but again, 500 nits is gonna be plenty for most people, especially if, you're, if it's an indoor device. You do have Face ID versus Touch ID on the iPad Air 4, so to each their own. I do prefer Touch ID, especially on the iPads, because I have my iPad kind of in front of me at a desk at all times, so it's easier to unlock, versus having to reach over for the Touch ID. But again, a lot of people do like the Touch ID and are still used to that from their iPhone, so both great for security. It just depends on what you like better. And then the one big thing that the iPad Pro does have over the iPad Air is that the iPad Pro has ProMotion, which refreshes at 120 hertz versus the iPad Air only sticks with 60 hertz. So the screen itself is still great, it's still bright, it's still powerful, but again, you're not getting that ProMotion display to move it back and forth and kind of have that snappy feel. But again, if you've never used 120 hertz display or ProMotion, you're not gonna know the difference. Your iPhone is at 60 hertz refresh rate and these iPhones are amazing, right? Because it has a touch sample rate that's a little bit higher. So again, the iPad Air 4 60 hertz versus 120 hertz on the iPad Pro. So those are pretty much all the differences that you're getting between the new iPad Pro, the 11 inch version, and then the iPad Air 4. So again, it is about a $150 difference if you go with the 256 gigabyte model. You have the A14 versus the M1, and that, we ran down those lists. So if all those things, right, which is the ProMotion, the M1 chip, 5G, Thunderbolt, if all those things are worth $150 to you, then by all means, you know, the iPad Pro will be for you. But if you guys stuck around long enough, now what I wanna do is compare that iPad Pro, the new one, 
to maybe a 2020 or a 2018 iPad Pro because that's where you're really gonna see like, hey, maybe this isn't worth all that much, right? So right now, I did check the Apple store. Apple's refurbished tablet side is 100% empty. I've been on there probably the last three, four days just to kind of refresh it and see if something's shown up. Nothing, which means there aren't many refurbished. But keep in mind that when people do buy these new iPad Pros, like myself, I'm trading in my older iPad Pro to Apple. So don't be surprised if like a month from now, maybe three weeks from now, when the new iPad Pro start coming into people's offices, into their homes, that Apple's gonna have a surge of refurbished iPad Pro products, or any iPads for that matter, in their refurbished store. So keep that in mind that that's probably gonna happen because that's what they're gonna do with my iPad Pro. They're gonna take it, they're gonna clean it, they're gonna make sure it works, and then they're gonna put it on the refurbished program. But now let's run through the spec list of what an 11 inch iPad Pro from 2018 looks like compared to a newer 2021 M1 iPad Pro. So let's talk about the initial spec sheet, right? So for the 2018 iPad Pro, you're rocking the A12X versus the M1 on the new iPad Pro. You have a seven megapixel selfie versus the 12 megapixel selfie with center stage. You have one 12 megapixel rear camera versus again, that big array, the dual camera array and the LiDAR scanner. You have USB-C versus Thunderbolt for the new M1 iPad Pro. And then you have the data difference, which is 4G versus 5G. And again, those are capable, right? They don't come with it. You have to pay more money for those things. But again, both of them are compatible with the Apple Pencil 2. Both are compatible with the Magic Keyboard and a Slim Folio keyboard. Both have an 11 inch display that has ProMotion, has that liquid retina, has the same contrast ratio, the same P3 color gamut, the same 600 nit brightness. So from a screen perspective, you're getting the same thing, right? You're getting the same exact thing on a three year old device. You get the 120 Hertz, true tone, anything that was announced in that 2021 model will be the same thing that's on a 2018 iPad Pro. But then in terms of internals, this is where it kind of changes up a bit, right? So we talked about the new iPad Pro, you get anywhere from 128 gigabytes to two terabytes of internal storage with anywhere from eight to 16 gigs of RAM. And then with the older iPad Pro, you can go from, I think 64 gigs up to one terabyte. So you don't get the two terabyte variant. And then only the one terabyte variant has six gigs of RAM. Otherwise you're stuck with four gigs of RAM. But again, I'm on the iPad Pro 12.9 inch with 256 gigabytes of storage, which means four gigs of RAM. And I've never ever had a performance issue with this iPad. Battery, yeah, battery is a little iffy now at this point with the old age of the battery and things like that. But performance, no issues whatsoever. But those are pretty much all the differences between the iPad Pro from 2018 and the iPad Pro from pretty much today, right? The screen is identical on both ends, 600 nits of brightness, 264 PPI, everything is exactly the same. So the only reason somebody would go with the new 2021 M1 iPad Pro is A, if they need the dual camera array and the LiDAR scanner. So I know that there's a lot of niche cases where people do absolutely need that and they're working on stuff with that. So if you need that in an 11 inch form factor, then either get the 2021 or maybe a refurbished 2020 iPad Pro, right? Cause that also has a LiDAR scanner. But then if you want Thunderbolt, then you gotta go with the new 2021 iPad Pro. And if you really need 5G, you gotta go with the 2021 iPad Pro. So those are really the only two reasons somebody should go with the 11 inch 2021 iPad Pro again, and unless they need two terabytes of storage, because at that point you can't, you know, there's no 2018 iPad Pros with that much storage built in internally. So if you need that much storage, then go ahead. That's what you need that iPad Pro for, then perfect. But other than those two things that I mentioned, the iPad Pro from 2018 is the same. And I've seen them refurbished. I've seen them used from anywhere from 450 to like $700, maybe even less than 450 if you get the 64 gigabyte model. So I just think it's a better buy, better financial decision, unless you're in that camp where you need those two main features, which is Thunderbolt and 5G on the 11 inch M1 iPad Pro. Or if you're hoping that, you know, with the M1 processor and WWDC coming around in June, that the M1 versions of these iPad Pros are gonna have some exclusive features and feature sets with iPad OS 15 that will not be able to be replicated on the A14, the A12Z or the A12X. So, but again, don't buy a product for the promise of what it's gonna to do tomorrow, buy it for what it's doing currently today. But again, that was just a big rant that I had. I wanna figure out who this 11 inch iPad Pro is for, right? I just, I can't find the perfect use case unless you're somebody that needs those specific things. So let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think? Are you guys picking up an 11 inch iPad Pro from this year? And if you are, what is the previous device that you have, if any? You know, if you have a 2020 11 inch iPad Pro, are you gonna upgrade or a 2018 iPad Pro? Are you gonna upgrade? I'm very, very curious. And that's basically what this video is. I wanna find out who this 11 inch iPad Pro is for. And maybe we'll have a nice little rebuttal video or a recap video kind of talking about what your comments said in the comments below. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I know it was a long one. Thanks for sticking with me. If you guys made it to the end, you guys are legends. Until next time. Peace.